Hey everybody, I hope you all are doing well and welcome back to Whiskey Wonders. And this is probably going to be one of my favorite videos for the year because it was one of my favorite wonders for sure, uh, which is uh, us back at the international whiskey event known as Paris Whiskey Live, where we saw some amazing bourbons and some amazing scotches, yes. And that is all good and fine, but for us, the highlights sit around the Japanese whiskey wing of the event and boy, did they come out in force? I'm talking about Nika, I'm talking about Ichiro, as well as the big dog, Suntory, made a very big splash. So today we're gonna to talk about uh, the booths, we're gonna talk about the event, we're gonna talk about the exclusive rare Japanese whiskey that we picked up to, uh, to collect and maybe eventually drink. And we're gonna talk about the whole experience and whether or not it was worth going to and whether you should. Now, before uh, we get to it, if you like these videos, if you uh, like all of our videos, really, whether it is, the wanders or the hauls or the reviews or the unbottlings, the unboxings and all the amazing stuff that we got cooking up for you. And we have a lot, we have a lot, a lot. Please don't forget to like and subscribe because it does really help the channel grow. And of course we are so, so thankful for that. Thank you. But also because you get updates when our newest long videos come out as well as when our newest short videos come out. Or now, Let's get down to the video. So now while we are waiting for the international Wander Vision to get fired up, and it takes a little bit longer because the Wander Vision operators only work 35 hours a week. <laughs> Just get us our ear up. Um, but uh, let us do get warmed up here and do a little bit of a whiskey check in the glass. And I think uh, what I'm gonna be enjoying, uh, which is gonna be perhaps a little on the nose, is this Itro's World Whiskey, I think it's 2021, maybe we've had it for a little while, but man, is it delicious and interesting. Uh, and it is, is a nice precursor to the booth and the whiskey <laughs> we're gonna be talking about. So let's get that uh, flipped over on both sides, get a nice even distribution, see if we can get a pop. Here we go. Mmm, very poppy, very poppy. And uh, get some juice, oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, and to whiskey, because let's face it, you can never really drink too much of it. <laughs> you can only just drink it too fast. <laughs> Cheers. Mmm, such a unique take on Japanese world whiskey. Man, so good. All right, so real quick, uh, I just wanna go a little bit more in depth about the Paris Whiskey Live event. But uh, of course we were in Paris and the event is in Paris. And the Paris Whiskey Live event is an annual event where the whiskeys of the world all come together along with other some other liquors. Uh, there is uh, gin as well as rum was super duper popular. I guess the Europeans are really into rum. As well as scotches obviously was popular. But uh, you know, for us, uh, it was a great opportunity to kind of get together and, and congregate uh, with the whiskey whiskey world together live in Paris, Paris Whiskey Live, and chew the fat with the professionals as us whiskey and bourbon plebiscites, you know, the non-industry folks uh, have a chance to really intermingle and interact with those types of folks and enjoy a wide range of whiskeys that maybe we wouldn't have tried for, we wouldn't have shelled out for uh, at the bar if we had seen it uh, at, at uh, the liquor store or something like that, and get a chance to try those and kind of expand our whiskey horizon. Um, so it was a very, very interesting event to go to, and it was a way for us to get our hands on some very, very collectible, rare, and sought after, maybe sought after, Japanese whiskeys um, that you can really only find at these kinds of events. Think about it, it's like the, the souvenir t-shirt that you used to get at the air shows or <laughs> the Winston National Drag Race or something like that. So I, later on I think about, you know what, I don't know that a lot of people want it, but it is rare, it is collectible, and we were so excited to get it. So let's talk a little bit about what we did end up getting first because uh, being a whiskey collector who collects whiskey much faster than I drink it, the Paris Whiskey Live was an opportunity to get our hands on an annual release of whiskey um, that is only available at these events, at the Whiskey Live event. And it, it was first, and I'm most proud of, this uh, Ichiro's Chichibu La Maison du Whiskey Paris Edition 2023. Ooh, and uh, obviously it was bottled specifically for La Maison du Whiskey. So I, I would assume this is the equivalent of a barrel select. Um, and although it is a bit of a mouthful <laughs> to pronounce it, again, we were super lucky to get it because there was only a few, and you'll see it here in the footage, there was only really a few left on the shelf. So 
uh, you know, it was something that went very quick within that general audience. So Ichiro obviously is a world-class blended Japanese whiskey maker. Uh, they are the made, there are other versions made of the world whiskey, uh, like this one, uh, as well as another one I think we have that we picked up but have not yet opened it. Uh, and the master distiller, his name is Ichiro Akuro, who comes from a long, long, family lineage of master distillers. And in fact, they did sake for basically centuries before, but up until 1945, his grandfather established the Hanyu Distillery, which may sound familiar, and it was known for a very niche uh, whiskey that it made of high quality from Japan. But when that distillery, the Hanyu Distillery, uh, shut down during the Whiskey Ice Age, uh, that was uh, the 1980s, <laughs> uh, Ichiro, he saved the whiskey that was left over from the distillery and continued to age them and then re-released them uh, in the early 2000s as the playing card series, which maybe you are familiar with if you've ever watched Sotheby's and looked at the whiskey auction and tried to find whiskey that was so stupid expensive that uh, <laughs> all, all no mere mortals could buy it, you'll notice those Hanyu playing card series are definitely on that list. I think they're nearly a bazillion dollars. Moreover, some of those whiskeys from his grandfather's collection and from the company that shut down uh, are included in these Chichibu's uh, blends, including this Paris edition. So that is one thing that makes it very special, the chichibu I guess we could call it. But also the fact that it was blended specifically for one of the largest and one of my favorite whiskey haunts in Paris, La Maison du Whiskey. Now the whiskey itself is a nine barrel blend of Chichibu aged in ex bourbon cast quarter cask chibidaru and uh, a five to seven year old hogsheads of other Japanese single malts. Some of them are, are which are malted by hand. And I bet you get a nice extra handsy taste to it. <laughs> uh, but no, really, it, it is quite limited. Uh, the other editions, there are other editions that are made. Uh, there are editions made uh, for London. There is even a US edition. This one specifically has the Galleries de Lafayette, which is there in central Paris and is a famous shopping place on the front of it. So it's kind of a, a landmark label to go along with it. Here at the Whiskey Live store, we can see that it was 409 euros for this bottle, which comes out to about $449 uh, USD because that pesky euro just <laughs> keeps going up. Uh, or maybe the dollar is going down. Anyway, it's about 30% less at the Whiskey Live event than if you can get it, if you can get it on the open market, although I don't have any specific prices for it. And I would also add that this one is prized to us, uh, but the number of people looking for Japanese whiskeys overall, who are also looking for one that is kind of a, a barrel select from a French distributor like La Maison du Whiskey, is probably pretty small. So it's more of a collector's pride than it is, uh, you know, an investment piece for us, and if I've learned anything from Pawn Stars, just because something is rare doesn't necessarily mean it is valuable. But you know what? Who cares? <laughs> In addition to that, we also picked up a bottle of the Ichiro's Malt Chichibu Red Wine Cast version, which was not as popular for sure, but it did seem very interesting uh, to us. Uh, this one was 289 euros, uh, which is definitely the much younger and much less popular sibling of the two. Um, and they had a lot of other great Japanese whiskeys uh, there as well, like the Nika Yochi 10, Yamazaki 12, Sukushu 12s, of course, as well as behind the glass, and you can see it here, the Hikushu 1800th year anniversary. Um, so like I said, the Japanese selection was coming in heavy, right? They were coming in real heavy and it was pretty good. So, uh, so that is what we got. Uh, let's do a little story time about the booths and uh, kind of the experience overall, because I think that is really the experience is what we came for. The whiskey, pretty cool, right? I like having it and uh, I'm pretty excited to have it, but uh, the experience is what it was all about because there really was an amazing like plethora of different folks you get to talk to that would take forever to try to conglomerate if you were trying to go to each carrier or something like that. And it was worth every penny that we spent on it. So of course, obviously, <laughs> there's also the benefit that you are in the City of Lights. You have great food and champagne for days. And the amazing whiskey also helped too. But uh, the main booth that we went to uh, was the Nika. Uh, they also had the Ichiro booth, the Ichiro booth. And they had the Suntory booth, which just, I mean, put everybody else into the shade. And actually, I think 
Now, it was very, the thing that I thought was most interesting is to see the type of clientele that would go to each of these booths. We'll get to that here in a sec. The first booth uh, that we went to was the Ichiro booth and the folks attending this booth, not working there, but the people drinking it, they seem very much like quiet professionals, like maybe engineers or accountants or dentists, uh, which was very, very uh, interesting to me. I had never even thought about who is the Ichiro whiskey drinker? Who's drinking this kind of small boutique-esque whiskey? And it kind of makes sense, but it, it was relatively quiet. Everyone was polite, no pushing and shoving. And we got to try, uh, obviously, the Paris edition, uh, which was the one thing that we wanted to try out of there because uh, who knows how long it's going to be before we open this one. And we got to try the red wine uh, version as well. Uh, and they were both nice uh, and they were very healthy pours. And I will tell you that the Paris edition is quite good. It has a very almost like rustic seaside feel to it and a definite Japanese characteristic. But of course, it is a well blended whiskey, so you get that side of it too. The red wine version uh, was added a much more kind of juicy aspect to it. Um, but, uh, you know, the, quick, the drink on the red wine was quick and it was not our first drink. So <laughs> I'll tell you, I was much more excited about the Paris, but the red wine is also good too. So it was cool to see that that brand is gaining prominence and uh, to try to get to try it out and also meet some of the reps, uh, which we don't really come across that often here in Los Angeles. Now, the second booth uh, was the Nika booth and it was a world apart, literally a world apart. I mean, I will tell you, it was a much, much more raucous affair. And all the staff were working very hard there. They had a pretty limited English proficiency as well as pretty limited French proficiency. I didn't hear them speaking any French either. Uh, but what they did speak loudly was heavy whiskey pours. And even though they were mostly already red faced and having a great time, the booth was full of folks who were uh, on my side of the bar seemed more like kind of small business owners, younger, maybe more party centric uh, kind of drinkers. Uh, and again, they were pouring the drinks so liberally. <laughs> I wasn't sure that I was going to make it. I wasn't sure the wife was going to make it. I wasn't sure the guy on the other side of the bar was going to make it through this event. And uh, not all of us did. Either way, I got a chance to try the Nika Yochi non-stage statement, uh, which I found unremarkable, uh, as well as the Nika Super, which I always see interesting on the bar or at the liquor store, but never gonna, never gonna shell out for it. But it was nice. It had a very hefty kind of full body maltiness to it. It almost felt bourbon-esque, which again, Nika is very good at making kind of a Japanese bourbon style Japanese whiskey. So, uh, but I wanted to make sure that I saved enough room and by enough room, I mean enough sobriety uh, for the next booth, which was the Suntory booth. Now Suntory, I mean, Obviously being the biggest Japanese whiskey producer at the event and in the world really, I guess they did not disappoint. They brought the full regalia, starting with a booth that looks like a full on sushi restaurant that had multiple attendants. They had a hostess and like a, a waiting queue and a, quite a, a line. They had brought out for the tasting line, a lineup of most of their standard whiskeys that were non-age statements. Um, also, by the way, I gotta mention, 100% class. The folks that work there, the style, Suntory, 100% class. But um, of course, they had drinks that took uh, everyone through, so they had that lineup. And of course, I sat out the Tokai as my time to drink ratio uh, was already way off balance. <laughs> and I didn't need to raise my spirits any more than necessary. One thing that I thought was very impressive is the folks at the booth who were working there were not just kind of BS, you know, product ambassadors or like Joe Blow models or whatever, Joe Schmo they hired to do it. Um, but what that meant is that we could get into some really deep and hard hitting questions and get answers from them in ways that you don't usually get at the liquor store or at the bar. Like, why did they raise the price so much? And how come it's so hard to get Suntory age statements? And when will the Hibiki 12 come back? Just, I won't tell anybody, let me know. <laughs> and why is the ABV so low on the Yamazaki and the Kushi? Of course, after expertly dodging all of my, we'll call them pedantic questions. I'm sure she's heard them about 150 times that day. Uh, but seeing my love for the brand, uh, the wife and I actually got invited back to do a tasting of the Hakushu 18 100th anniversary in the private booth, which they had built in the in the back side of it, on the back side, which is good because, you know, we do actually have a bottle of it, but opening it is just psychologically <laughs> impossible to do at this point. So it's great, it's great to get to drink some of Suntory's and not have to dip into ours. The experience was pretty amazing though. Uh, and it was a great little small group, just us and uh, two other guys. Uh, I think they might have been uh, British or maybe Australian, something like that, um, who were also deep Suntory lovers. And they gave us the full treatment. And I will say again, I can't say it once, I can't say it twice, I can't say it a thousand times. Suntory is nothing but class all 
the way. Also, also not for nothing, the, the, the vibe at the booth, uh, where Itro, again, quiet professionals, folks who uh, obviously use a lot of their brain for technical thinking is what it felt like. Nico was very lively, very raucous, very kind of frat boy-y, maybe, you know, if I had to describe it. But Suntory seemed like, how do you say it? Conspicuous consumers of the world, right? It's, it's basically the Japanese version of McAllen. There's lawyers, there's doctors, politicians, executives who drink Suntory because yes, it is good. Let's, let's, not, let's not mix words about that. Uh, but also because you get the kudos, you know, lots of middle-aged folks with nice watches and business class flights. I'll tell you what, <laughs> it felt like home, cheers. So overall, I would say that the experience at the Whiskey Live, just amazing. It was such a cool event uh, that is small enough that you can actually get to talk to the reps, whether it is the Scotch or the Bourbon or the Japanese Whiskey Lines. Uh, and they're not overrun. The Risky runs free and you have time to really chat with thoughtful, knowledgeable brand reps that uh, will give you answers to the questions that you always wanted to know, or at least expertly dodge them. <laughs> also like, is the Hakusha Distillery really in a bird sanctuary or is that just something they put on the box? <laughs> All right, so that's it for today's Whiskey Wanders at the Paris Whiskey Live event. And man, it was just so amazing. And if you ever have a chance to go, you should just jump upon the opportunity. Um, Cause it's just, it's just such a great experience and such a communal vibe and everything was so cool. And also you get to go to Paris and, and do those kinds of things. But that being said, if you like this video and, or if you really like all of our videos, I know this one's a little bit different, but if you like all of our videos, whether it is the wanders or the hauls or the reviews or the unbottlings, the unboxings, or really all the amazing stuff that we have cooking up for you. And we have a whole heap of amazing stuff cooking up for you coming down the pipeline this year, please don't forget to like and subscribe because it does really help the channel grow. And again, we are so, so thankful for that. Thank you. But also because you get updates when our newest videos come out, whether it is the longs or whether it is the shorts. Now, just remember, if you do find a whiskey that you love, even if it does not have that much value, but it is still kind of rare and you're gonna hold on to it and cherish it forever. If you do find a whiskey you love, just buy it because if you don't, somebody else will and they're going to pack it into their bag and they're going to lug it home and then hold on to it and give it away in their estate sale and that person might even be me <laughs> all right everybody have a great rest of your week i'm out and i do